This is a true story about events on the Cowan Falls Trail in Walker County, Georgia in October 2011. The photos were taken there in November 2023. I was running 10 minutes late to meet a group of high school students for a field trip in 2011. Fretting under the mental weight of my tardiness, I slowed my pickup truck, turned left onto a gravel forest service road, and followed its twists and turns to a secluded parking lot. I needn't have fretted because the school group wasn't there yet. After parking in the deserted lot, I grabbed my binoculars, exited my vehicle, and listened to the mingled sounds of an autumn morning, the calls of woodland birds and water dripping in the forest after an overnight rain. I used my binoculars to observe a small flock of Tennessee warblers, each hovering briefly beneath limbs of beech trees, flycatcher-like, to pick off tasty insects that look like tiny white balls of lint. Cowan Falls is a place I know well. In 1996, I visited this place on the first day of each month to catalog how the landscape changed over the year. I used my notes and photos to write Sands Through the Hourglass, which appeared in the spring 1997 issue of North Georgia Journal Magazine. The trail to Cowan Falls has changed markedly since 1996. Back then, the landscape was heavily shaded by a lush, temperate forest of robust hardwoods and sturdy pines, succulent annuals and vibrant perennials. Since then, drought, wind, and fire have played havoc. On the lower slope, deadfalls litter the forest floor. The upper slope had witnessed even greater change. There, most of the trees beneath a rocky bluff were dead, leaving a denuded and dismal landscape of stone, shrub, and stump. The trail had changed too. Once it was a well-graded and well-maintained path that led to a wooden deck perched jauntily on the side of the rocky bluff overlooking a pleasant waterfall and an expanse of valley and ridge stretching forth below. By 2011, the trail appeared to be in a state of marked decline. The badly deteriorated platform was roped off, short stretches of trail on steep and precarious slopes had eroded, all the old guardrail fencing was gone, and loose rock and down limbs choked sections of the path. Because of the hazards, a hiker on the 1.25 mile trail had to remain vigilant and step carefully, especially along the steep upper stretch, or else risk twisting an ankle or suffering a bad fall. When the school group finally arrived, I let out a sigh of concern. I hadn't realized these students had special needs. Some were in wheelchairs, some had contorted ankles or legs that made walking difficult, and others suffered from a variety of serious limitations. It was obvious that this group could never negotiate that steep, perilous trail to Cowan Falls. While I fretted silently, the teachers and aides went about their business quietly and competently. Where I had doubts and worries, they showed determination and dedication. So I made a few introductory remarks and we set forth on that rocky, limb-covered, precarious footpath scaling John's Mountain. I don't know how we made it to the top without incident, but we did. I watched nervously as students with crooked legs edged along eroded ledges. Others stepped on and around loose stones and slick roots. Still others shinnied under or around deadfalls, and a few clung to the hand of a teacher or aide while climbing the sheer stone steps up the side of the bluff. When we finally reached the top, we sat down on smooth rock to catch our breath and enjoy the views. Many of the students were visibly enthusiastic about the experience. They asked questions that showed keen awareness. One inquired whether there might be black-capped chickadees at Cowan Falls, and another asked about cedar waxwings. A third bit into the petiole of a sassafras leaf and exclaimed that it tasted like citrus, an accurate description. Nearly all of them commented about the loveliness of beautyberry, a handsome shrub with glossy purple fruit. It was at the top of the bluff that I witnessed the most noteworthy moment of an outing filled with noteworthy moments. As we relaxed on the smooth rock, the final two people reached the top and joined us. A special education teacher carrying a frail student who didn't have the use of his legs. 
Confined to a wheelchair, that young man had no hope of experiencing the hike to Cowan Falls or of joining his classmates at the top of the rugged mountain. No hope, that is, except for the teacher who carried him cradled in his arms from the parking lot all the way up that long obstacle course of a trail, and then he carried him all the way back down. I've met a few heroes over the years, and goodness knows we always need heroes. I learned that day where I could find some. The students, aides, and teachers at the Special Education Department at Calhoun High School. I'd never before visited Calhoun Falls with such exceptional people who turned an ordinary outing into something extraordinary. I led them up the trail to Cowan Falls, but they showed me how to get there. If you visit Cowan Falls today, you'll find that the trail has been rerouted and the viewing platform rebuilt. The new section of trail is longer and easier, but the section negotiating the bluff is as tough as ever. Thank you for watching this Georgia Backroads program.